Dr. Lorraine Day did something most people have not had the courage to do. When diagnosed with cancer, she decided to heal herself without the aid of the medical community. What makes this story particularly interesting is that she herself is a highly respected orthopedic surgeon. Instead, after 30 years as an agnostic, she turned to belief in an ancient recipe for health from the Old Testament after she learned that the cancer had spread. So let's start a little bit with your, your own story and how you ended up where you are today. And some of it was pretty trying, physically and otherwise. Well, that's right. I uh, developed cancer uh, in 1992 with a very small lump. It was about half the size of an almanac or even smaller. And it just bothered me when I put my seat belt on and I didn't think it was cancer because it was high up on my chest. And the plastic surgeon that did the biopsy at Loma Linda University, he didn't think it was cancer either. I had it done under local. But then he called me a few days later and said that not only did I have cancer, but there were not clear margins. It had already spread into my chest wall. So I had another biopsy. At that time, I actually thought, you can cut cancer out. Now I know you cannot cut cancer out and get rid of it that way because all the factors that allowed the cancer to develop are still present in your body unless you change the way you're eating and living and everything about your life. And so I had another biopsy done down at Scripps Hospital in uh, La Jolla, near San Diego, and they, I let them put me to sleep to see if they could get clear margins, which they still could not get. I told them you cannot do a, bio, um, a mastectomy, which they recommended, and I said uh, I was not going to do chemo or radiation. Well, the interesting thing is both of my surgeons were personal friends. One was from, that I knew in college, and the other one was a resident with me at UC San Francisco. And they thought I had lost my mind because I said, I'm not doing chemo, I'm not doing radiation. And they said, why not? And I said, well, chemotherapy is poison. And I said, you and I were both taught that chemotherapy causes cancer. I said, every doctor knows that. The patients don't know that. The patients are all surprised when I say chemotherapy causes cancer. And they'd say, my doctor wouldn't give me something that causes cancer when I already have cancer. And I say, yes, they would, because they don't know what else to do. But by that time, I had found out that um, there was another way to get well. And I had found that out because people had written to me showing me that there was a huge cover-up in cancer cures and I was quite shocked. And I investigated the information and in fact I had had my own radio show called Truth Serum where I was interviewing alternative doctors uh, at the time that I found out I myself had cancer. I didn't know exactly what to do at the beginning but I did know that I had to change my diet to a totally vegan diet because during the time I had my radio show, I had been going around the country interviewing people I had heard had gotten well by natural methods from cancer. This was before I knew I had cancer. And so one thing that all of them had done was changed to a totally vegan vegetarian diet, which means no animal products, no meat, poultry, fish, dairy, eggs, anything like that. So I, I changed again, the, the, the lump was small, very small at first, and, uh, but it, obviously it wasn't all removed because I did not have clear margins. So I changed my diet to a totally vegan diet. That was the right diet, but it's not enough to get you well from any major disease. Now did the growth continue at this point? No, nothing happened for about nine months. Mm -hmm and then the tumor returned right in the same place and on my website I show those uh, pictures. It's huge. Uh, yeah, well it's, it only, it went about nine months later it mm -hmm. just came, uh, regrew to the size of a marble. Right, but, I was just referring to the pictures on your right, side of what ultimately right, happened. Right. Yes. And, uh, and so, but I knew that I was in trouble when it returned because I was doing everything I knew how to do which was just changing my diet. It's the right diet but it's not enough by itself to get you well from disease. So I uh, then started searching around and I tried over 40 different types of alternative medicines. I tried the, the uh, macrobiotic diet, I tried 714X, uh, the Rife Generator, and many, many other kinds, long enough to find out if they would work, and it, it didn't change. The tumor didn't go down in size. Then about 
nine months after that, suddenly over a three-week period of time, the tumor grew from the size of a marble to the size of a large grapefruit that you see on my website. And at first it wasn't terribly painful, but over the next few weeks to months it became terribly, terribly painful. And I knew I was in serious trouble because I didn't know what to do. So, and I tried all of these alternatives. I tried over 40 and uh, none, of, none of them worked. So I then, um, I had started studying the Bible and let me say right off the bat, I'm not into organized religion and I believe that Christianity is not a religion, it's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I had been an agnostic for virtually all of my adult life, but at this point I knew everything every other doctor knew and I knew that regular um, uh, medicine could not get me well. Again, I refused chemo, I refused radiation, I wouldn't you know, get involved with any of those and I knew that a mastectomy wouldn't help me because uh, I didn't get breast cancer because I had too many breasts. You know, cutting mm -hmm. organs off or out does not solve the problem. If you keep on doing what you've always done, you'll keep on being what you've always been. So something had to change, but I didn't understand what I needed to change. Now, the human body is meant to heal itself. Uh, if you get a cut, it will heal unless you have destroyed your immune system so much with uh, the way you live or chemotherapy or anything else like that or if you dig it open every day or if you put dirt in it but you have to do something traumatic to the cut on your hand to keep it from healing the body is meant to heal I just had to find out the things that I was doing to my body that caused them caused it not to heal or to to find out the situation I was in I gave myself cancer I didn't know I was doing it. But uh, talk about how that... That's right. I, I, I gave myself cancer. Everybody gives themselves cancer. And people don't like to admit that. But it's like being an alcoholic. You can't get well from alcoholism unless you admit publicly you did this to yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, people have a very difficult time doing that. And they don't realize that the, the very things that they do every day are the things that cause cancer and Parkinson's and all that. Now... Disease is a spiritual problem. It starts in your heart because you want to eat and live the way you want to eat and live rather than the way God has designed us to eat and live. Uh, I had to learn that and I started studying the Bible. I was not healed miraculously. I was healed the way anybody else can be healed. It was a long hard struggle and a very regimen, regimented plan uh, and it took 18 months for me to get well. For two years, I was getting worse and worse and worse, and people say, well, how did you follow your progress? Well, I followed my progress by getting worse and worse and worse, but I still would not go to the conventional doctors because I had seen too many thousands of patients die from the treatment we give them. Chemotherapy is poison. It causes cancer. Every doctor knows that. Radiation, uh, doctors will tell you, don't get too many x-rays. X-rays cause cancer. But when you have cancer, then they say, we have to give you huge doses of what we told you to avoid because it causes cancer. Well, it's because doctors don't know how to treat cancer. We're never taught because the pharmaceutical industries control much of what is taught in medical school because they give the majority of funding for research and they only teach surgery and drugs. And we're going to talk about that whole cancer industry also in a minute. Right. So continuing your story, you got worse for two so years. So I got worse for two years until I was bedridden for six months. At one point, I was not expected to live through the night. And I still, my husband at the time said, I've got to take you to the hospital. I said, I'm not going. Because I knew that if I went, they would give me drugs, and I had so little life left in me that I would die. So um, I did pray to the Lord and I said this is not working so well <laughs> I don't know how to do this and uh, God has promised in Psalms 103.3 that he heals all our diseases but he does tell us how he does this in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7 verses 11 to 15 he said if you obey my laws that includes his health laws my commandments and my decrees I will keep you free from every disease so I prayed and I said you know, you're going to have to show me how to do this because I'm dying, but I'm not going to go do that because I know that's wrong. I'm not going to do conventional medicine. So 
got impressed on my mind a way to stay alive during that night, and I discussed that on my video, Cancer Doesn't Scare Me Anymore, how I actually stayed alive because I hadn't been able to eat anything for two weeks and I hadn't been able to drink anything for three days. And my uh, lungs were filling up with fluid. I was having great difficulty breathing. And since I'm a trauma surgeon, I know what people look like when they're dying and I knew that I was dying. Uh, but I held true and I said, I'm not going to do it man's way. I'm going to do it God's way. And the, the way I got well uh, was with all things that are natural, the things that God has created in their most natural form, and it's all free except for food, and you have to buy that anyway. And that's the way God would do it. He would make it so everybody has access to the way to get well. But you see, what man has done is he has taken over medicine, which we'll talk about later, and made it into a very expensive thing and said, in order for you to get well, you've got to come to us and pay big money. That's what humanity has also done with religion. You want to get saved? You've got to come to us. We're going to make an industry out of religion. Doesn't you really come and you pay one. money. Mm -hmm. And God says, it's a personal relationship with me. You just come to me. You don't need an organization. He showed me how to stay alive over the next few days. And uh, I had some knowledge of some of the things that I needed to do by that time, such as I stayed on the same diet. Uh, the diet was not a juice diet. I drank a lot of juices, 13 fresh homemade vegetable juices, 12 vegetable juices, and one fruit juice every day in between meals. I ate all natural food, three meals a day, because people are always saying, well, you went on a juice diet. No, I did not. The juice is to get huge amounts of nutrition into you in a form where your body doesn't have to spend energy digesting it. But I got my fiber and all from eating three regular meals a day. Uh, but and I you found were able out to eat again. Um, yes, after uh, after several <clears throat> days, after mm -hmm. I went through this crisis period, I was able you to start out. drinking okay. first and then eating. Um, and then I I realized I searched not only the Bible. I went to the Bible to see what was the original diet given in the Garden of Eden, which was a totally natural vegan diet. So I I started on that diet, and then I started searching the medical literature finding all the things that we doctors are never told in medical school, such as cancerous tumors grow twice as fast if you're breathing indoor air as outdoor air. And that is well documented in the medical literature. So mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time outdoors. I found out that sunlight reduces the size of internal cancerous tumors and does not cause skin cancer. Okay. So, and I explain that on uh, my videos. It does not cause skin cancer. It is the way we're eating that yes. causes skin cancer. Because skin cancer was not a problem for thousands of years. Our ancestors lived outdoors and worked outdoors and they didn't get skin cancer. It's a new phenomenon. And it's, what has happened is from 1908, uh, where the 1909, I guess, the statistics showed that one out of 33 Americans had cancer, one out of 33. And at that time, the average American was eating 200 pounds of grains a year and 200 pounds of fresh potatoes, not, you know, fast French food fries. French fries. Right. <laughs> and so they uh, f were eating mainly a plant-based diet. By 1985, the incidence of grain eating had uh, gone in half, and the incidence of natural potato eating had decreased by 50%. The incidence of meat eating had doubled, the incidence of milk drinking had doubled, and the incidence of chicken eating had gone up 300%. And now the incidence of cancer was one out of three instead of one out of 33. Right. So as we change from a plant-based diet mainly to an animal, product and based refined diet, and refined mm -hmm. um, and sugar and all of that uh, then the the incidence of cancer went up dramatically and now it's one out of two and it's predicted that, that by the year 2020 everybody in their lifetime will develop cancer so anybody watching this uh, if right now it's either you or the person standing next to you who's going to get cancer so you better listen up huh? yeah so so anyway um, I found out this about outdoor air. I found out, and, and I explain why this happens on my videos. I explain 
why the outdoor air is so much better than the indoor air, even if you're living in an area that does not have great air. Outside air is still better than inside air. And then I got rid of all the sugar and uh, caffeine and all of the MSG and NutraSweet and all of these damaging things that are in the diet. And I ate only food in its natural form, which I still do. And uh, I also realized that you have to have peace in your life. And as I said, it starts in the heart and you have to learn to forgive everyone who's ever wronged you. Uh, they've done studies at Stanford showing the enormous significance of forgiveness and how it changes your vital signs, your heart rate, your blood pressure, uh, your adrenaline production and all of that when you harbor grudges or you're angry at someone. And so you cannot get well from mental illness or physical illness if you're holding on to grudges or you're angry. In fact, uh, the medical literature shows that 50% of all heart attacks occur after an episode of anger. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't get rid of that anger, you cannot get well. And I had been through a lot of difficult things in my life. I had um, been through a divorce that was very unpleasant and a custody battle for my children. And if you knew the circumstances, you would know I had a real reason in human terms to be angry, but I had to let it go. And unless you let it go, you cannot get well. And then, so we've got proper nutrition, Exercise is extremely important, but when I was sick, I couldn't exercise at all. I could barely get out of bed to go to the bathroom. But as I started to get well, then I started taking walks. The first walk was only about 20 yards, and I thought I'd really done something because I had been so emaciated and bedridden for so long. And then I started exercising more and more, but even after I got well, and I could work a full day and I had energy. It took three years after that before I got enough strength that I could go to the gym because I could do a few exercises at home but they would wear me out a lot. And it took three years before I was strong enough to get up off the bench without rolling over onto the floor and pushing myself up with my hands. So it's a long, hard struggle. And it took me 18 months after I got this whole 10 step plan together. The plan is the proper nutrition, Exercise, water is extremely important. The body is 75% water, the brain is 85% water. And uh, it's not 85% Coke or Pepsi or any of those things, not milk, it's water. And the, we lose 10 glasses of water every day just by living. And if we don't replace those, or if we drink caffeine or caffeinated soda or alcohol or any of those things that dehydrate our body, we will lose even more water. You can't do that. And so I started drinking huge amounts of water. And when I did, uh, things started changing because uh, I had symptoms of many other diseases when I had cancer. I had uh, symptoms of Parkinson's. I developed the pill rolling tremor of Parkinson's. I had uh, severe numbness in my left leg, like uh, multiple sclerosis. I developed Raynaud's uh, phenomenon where the fingertips, they weren't, wasn't get, they weren't getting enough blood. And I had horrible anxiety and depression. And it wasn't just because I had cancer. It was because the same things, I realized that all of these things were caused by the same lack of these 10 steps, which caused mm -hmm. cancer. When I started doing the plan, um, within eight months, all of my cancer was gone. Uh, so we have nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight. Um, temperance, which is elimination of all of these things that are in your diet and that you want to get rid of. Um, and then uh, rest, proper rest at the proper time of night because the healing hormones are produced between 10 p.m. and 2 o'clock in the morning, but you have to be asleep. Mm -hmm. And so people think, well, I can go to bed at 12 and get up at 8. No. We are meant really to start slowing down and going to bed when the sun goes down. We are meant to do that. And if we disobey these rules, you see, there are rules of this earth, such as the law of gravity. And if you resist the law of gravity, the law of gravity is still working whether you like it or not. And if you jump off of a high building, you're going to go down. I don't care whether you, want, you don't like it or not. If you resist these 10 natural health laws, you're going to get sick. If you live within them, you will be well. Uh, so we've got proper rest at the proper time of night. Uh, this first eight are the acronym New Start. Uh, nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, fresh air, 
proper rest at the proper time of night, trust in God. I realized that there was, we don't have within us, and I know there are others who disagree, we don't have within us the ability to get well. Certainly, the better you eat and the better you live, the healthier you will be. But if people don't have an external standard, and if they do not trust in God, eventually we will run into things in life that are too big for us and that we will go down. And so I started studying the Bible, learning to trust God and, um, and really give my troubles to Him. And then the last two steps are an attitude of gratitude. You have to be thankful for what you've got. And when I was bedridden and when I was so sick and I was in so much pain, I just thanked the Lord that I was alive. Uh, and that I had the possibility of getting well, even though I didn't know how, as long as I was alive. And then the last one is um, benevolence. Uh, you have to get outside yourself and, and help other people. Now, when I was bedridden, I couldn't help anybody else, but I could pray for others and quit praying just for my own self to get well and pray for other people. And so when you get outside of yourself and you stop focusing only on you, uh, that is a necessary part of getting well because everything starts in the heart um, if you the actions that you take have to start in your mind and in your heart and if you want to live your own way and defy all these laws of natural health you will eventually get sick when you're younger you may be able to put up with it for a while but eventually as you get older you will get sick so those are the basic steps and you will notice that they're all free except for food and if we grew our own food as we were meant to do, that would be free too. And so this plan is available to everybody in the world, but you have to do it. It doesn't work if you just know about it and don't do it. It's a plan that is simple, but it is not easy because people do not want to change the way they're living and eating. And I have had friends who have told me that they would rather eat their hot fudge sundaes or their hamburgers and die than to give them up and stay alive. And, you know, that's everybody's right. And it's not just life and death, it's quality of life. That's right, that's right. I mean, you have many, many years on the decline in that context of, you, of eating poorly. And that's stuff. right. And, and, but people say, well, I don't, I don't want to live a long time anyway in ill health. Well, you can live a long time and be healthy. <laughs> that's the good news. Right, exactly. And that's what I told you today is my birthday. I'm 69 years old today. I, I was just going to say, can we mention that? I <laughs> that's mean, you're, right. just, you're unbelievable. Yeah. And so, and I can do everything I did when I was 25 years old. And, and recently I told someone that I, um, I have the same energy that I had at 25. And they, you know, they were my age and they said, oh, come, you know, come on, that's really. And I said, my husband said, no, she's, she's right. She has the same energy that she had when she was 25. And I recently was remarried and my husband wanted to eat and live like I did because he said, I want to have that kind of energy. And so it does work. You can be healthy. I know people who are over 100 who eat and live like I do. And, uh, and they were just featured in a, in a big national uh, news piece because there, there's one woman is 101, she does eight miles on an exercise bicycle every day, she uh, volunteers at the local hospital, and she does all of these things. And so, uh, and she's totally well, she still drives her own car, and it doesn't matter how old you are if you feel well. And the, the tragedy is everybody can feel well if they're just willing to do it. But we become so addicted to food, and so addicted to our lifestyle, and so addicted to anger, People enjoy being angry. They have a real feast of being angry, but they don't realize that the skeleton at the feast is them because you eat yourself up when you're angry. And that's what cancer does. That's right. And so cancer is caused by the way we eat and the way we live. People go, I look in their shopping carts and I realize they're putting cancer in there when they, mm -hmm. they go home and they eat it and they give themselves cancer. But again, it's not just what you put in your mouth. It's what you put in your mind as well. When I was getting well, I didn't read the newspapers. I didn't listen to the radio. I didn't watch television except for high quality spiritual programs. I uh, only read the book and high quality religious, uh, the Bible and high quality religious books. And I only listened to classical music and high quality religious music, not the music that's played in most churches, which is, you know, ditties almost now. And so uh, you have to be very careful what you put in your mind 
as well as what you put in your mouth when you're getting well. And then you find out that you change your lifestyle so much you have no interest in any of that other as well. And what is the natural age span of a human being? Well, they say that it's, uh, you know, like 70 years old. Uh, people talk about, well, look, we're living longer than we ever have before. No, that is a lie of statistics. If a person got past the childhood diseases that were rampant because of bad sanitation and all that in the early 1900s, if they got past those, their life expectancy was just as long as it is now or longer. Uh, but with p all these people dying of cancer, they're juggling the statistics to make you think that we're living longer. We're not living longer. They're lying. Mm. But they would like you to think that because they want you to still contribute to the funding of medicine. But let's say you're raised in a healthy manner because you have conscious parents and you um, basically are living by these natural laws your entire life. Theoretically, shouldn't the human being extend at least to 100 years of oh, age? Yes. Shouldn't that be oh, our yes. natural that lifespan should be, That should be our natural lifespan at least. In fact, we were originally designed to live forever. Yeah. <laughs> but as, as people started uh, living their own way rather than God's way, uh, the, the life expectancy went way down. And now, if we certainly are meant to live at least to be 100 and mm -hmm. be healthy. Right. And if people just would take care of their bodies, except when you talk about people living healthfully, there are some people who live healthfully. But the idea of health, generally in America, is, you know, you read labels. Well, I don't read labels. I don't buy anything with a label mm -hmm. on it. Exactly. And so, and, and now the people say, well, the, the, the soil is so deficient. So I've got to take all of these man-made supplements. Well, the way you overcome that is you eat organic food, and so you don't have pesticides on it. It's grown in healthier soil, and you can overcome it in two major ways. Number one, drink a lot of homemade fresh vegetable juice in between meals because that will give you huge amounts of nutrients. And the other is to sprout, sprout your bean seeds and grains rather than cook them. That will increase their nutritional value up to 600 percent overcooked. Mm, yes, and that's the part of the, what the raw, raw food raw movement food right movement. now is about. And that raw, the more raw food you can eat, the better off you are. And I did not get well a hundred years ago when the soil was better than it is now. I got well yes. in the last 15 years. You right. know, or I have 11 more years of life that I didn't even deserve. I was supposed to die in 1995. Yeah. That's when I was so terribly sick. And I mean, I am so healthy, and people say, well, how do you know you're cancer-free? Well, first of all, I had a great big thing there, and oh, yeah. even though I had a portion of it debulked, they left most of it in. It was just for pain relief, and they sent me home to die. And now I've got a great big depression right here. In fact, you can feel where all of the soft tissue was was um, pushed away by right. the tumor, right. and, and, and I've got a big depression. I've got nothing there, you know, right. there's nothing there. Right. Besides that, how do you know when you're over the flu? Because you don't feel you sick feel anymore, <laughs> right? You know, people say, well, how do you know you're well? I was so terribly sick. You know, I was so terribly sick that I, I, now I'm not. Right. You know? And so, uh, but most people, when they have a tumor that size, they go and have it removed. So then how do you follow your progress? Mm -hmm. You see, you don't know if what you're doing is working if you've had the tumor removed. You need the tumor there to show you, is it receding? But, but doctors tell patients, you can't do it that way. We have to cut it out. But the reason that people have recurrences is that they first of all have chemotherapy and radiation which destroys your immune system. You need your immune system to get you well. And when you have it destroyed with the chemo and radiation, yes, it will destroy the tumor for a time, but it also destroys your immune system. And so then the tumor will always come back. It will always come back. If you have enough immune system left to fight it, you may survive for some period of time or maybe for a long time. But if most people or many people, their immune systems are so destroyed by the treatment that when the tumor comes back, they have nothing left to fight it with or they give them more chemo and more radiation and then that kills them. I've watched that happen to so many people, mm -hmm. including friends of mine 
who were too afraid to do what I did because they wanted to believe the white coats. You see, and I've, you are a white coat. I am a white coat. And I know that white coats don't know how to do this. They say they do, but that's because we're taught that. Um, doctors fear cancer more than non-doctors because the layperson believes that they can go to their doctor and their doctor can fix it. The doctor knows they can't fix it. And doctors talk among themselves about are we going to kill the patient first or are we going to kill the tumor? But you see, you can't just really kill a tumor. Uh, the body, as I said earlier, is meant to heal itself. What we have to do is stop injuring it. And we injure it by the way we eat, the mm -hmm. way we live. This is all kind of trauma. If you took a hammer and hit your thumb every day, you'd make it into hamburger and it wouldn't get well if you kept hitting it every day. You've got to stop doing the things that cause the injury to the body. And the problem is that most people don't know. And certainly the doctors don't know. We're never taught that. I mean, doctors, uh, doctors have um, a shorter life expectancy than the general population and they have a higher suicide rate. So why would you want to go to them for your health? <laughs> well, the, and that brings up a whole different line of questioning, but I want to get back for just a moment too to the um, barley greens oh, yes. and also the beet powder right? And, and how you utilize this and what the value, because green is everywhere. There are a thousand green powders out there right, right. now. Well, there are a thousand green powders out there. I tried a number of them. I found that, uh, first of all, the, the, the barley, the young barley plant, is one of the most nutritious foods in the world. And I went with a brand that had actually been developed 25 years ago where they, they blow it dry and it's not heated. And it has a good consistency and it tasted good and I would put it in my carrot juice. You can put it any, in any kind of juice. And all it is is food. It's not anything special. It's not a panacea. It's not a quick fix. It's food. But it is in a concentrated form. And uh, when you do put it in your juice or something like that, it gives you the equivalent of several uh, servings of a very nutritious green vegetable by doing it that way. So I use it as an adjunct. You don't have to use it to get well. Beets are very uh, uh, nutritious. And so you can use some beet powder. You have to use it sparingly because it's very cleansing and, and people have to use it very sparingly to do it. But I didn't use that because it wasn't available to me when I was getting well. But I would use the fresh juice, the fresh carrot juice and fresh green leafy vegetable juice. And those recipes are in my workbook called Getting Started on Getting Well, which is an adjunct to my videos. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I have a nine video set on how to get well and uh, you can start out with cancer doesn't scare me anymore and you can't improve on God. The video you can't improve on God tells the exact plan I use to get well. Mm -hmm. Again, okay. that is free. And people say, oh, you know, sometimes people accuse me, you just want to make money. The video is 1995. Right. These are not exorbitant no, no. prices. Nothing like chemotherapy, That's radiation, right. etc. My brother died of cancer because he refused to do anything that I did because mm -hmm. I was his little sister. Right. So he went to the doctors and they eventually killed him with chemotherapy. And uh, there were some chemotherapy drugs that he was taking that cost $3,000 right. a treatment. And they weren't covered. They were experimental, so they weren't covered by his insurance. Uh, for 1995, if, if a person just got one video, you can't improve on God, and followed that, they and their family could be well for the rest of their lives for under $20, you see. And, and people, but somehow they think if it's very, if it's inexpensive, it can't possibly work. Well, the whole plan is inexpensive. I never went to a doctor ever when I was going through my illness except for my biopsies, mm -hmm. you see. And so, and, and I had a, a debulking, which means they took out just a portion of the tumor just, just to give me some pain yeah. relief to send mm -hmm. me home to die. That's the only things I had. I never went to a doctor regularly. And uh, because um, there's not one single doctor who even claims to have created a body. I went to the great physician who is God and I asked him to show me how to get well because I knew he knew what was wrong with my body and what I needed to do to get well. And, and he is available to every individual. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go someplace. In fact, people will write to me and say, 
I need a doctor who is a specialist in, say, pancreatic cancer who is in my area. And I say, I've got just the one for you. I talked to him this morning. <laughs> He'll take care of you for free. And, and he's available to you all the time. And mm -hmm. that's the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, now, it was going, going away from that plan to a, a health insurance plan type of plan, a whole different kind of plan. What you're talking about really eliminates a, a large need for some of the HMO type health insurance that's out there because it eliminates so and people think, oh my God, I have to pay my 400 a month. What if I get cancer? Right. Or what if I got something else? The How only reason anybody needs any insurance, in fact, I, I would eliminate insurance. The doctor bills would go way down if people, there was no middleman. Mm -hmm. And the whole insurance industry was set up as really a sinister clandestine plan to, to put a middleman in between so people would not care as much as at how much it cost. Mm -hmm. And so people just paid for it. They would take better care of their bodies because mm -hmm. they would realize, I don't want to pay somebody to do this. The only reason anybody would need any kind of insurance is for trauma. If you get run over by a truck, you need someone like me who's a trauma orthopedic surgeon to put you back together. I'm not suggesting you can drink carrot juice and have your, uh, right. have your <laughs> legs <set>. straightened out. <laughs> right. So, but, but in fact, there are three things that, that doctors are necessary for. Number one is trauma. Number two is um, reconstruction, such if a child is born with a cleft palate or mm -hmm. something like that, then that, that is uh, an important thing to do. Um, and then uh, uh, if, if someone has, uh, well now, if people would eat right and live right, they wouldn't develop arthritis. Mm -hmm. But if they have severe arthritis, reconstructive surgery for a total hip or total knee is fine, but that isn't the way we were designed to be. We were designed for our joints to last all of our lives, but if people haven't been eating right and living right, and they change, but it's still, it's, they're older. So those are about the only things that you would need a surgeon. You don't need to take organs out. People, you know, have part of their liver out and part of this out and part of that out, their stomach. Well, that's not the way to do it. Those things can all be healed. And transplants of organs are really very dangerous. They were not designed to be available for human beings because in order for you to get an organ, a kidney or a liver or anything else from another person, before you get that, you have to have your immune system wiped out because the immune system was built created in us by God to uh, resist organs from another person. And so in order for you to accept one, you've got to have all this chemotherapy. Now they call it immunosuppressive therapy. It suppresses the immune system. It is exactly the same drugs as chemotherapy. And these people have to be on them for the rest of their lives. So eventually, they, frequently they will die of cancer because they've been taking chemotherapy all along to suppress the body's natural immune system to reject that organ. So it's a very dangerous thing and I would encourage people to, why don't you heal your body, heal your kidney, heal your liver, you can do that. We're designed to heal. And, uh, and people don't wanna do, unfortunately, what is necessary, but it's so much, so much better life Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any arthritis, I don't take any pills, I uh, don't have any fatigue syndrome, and, and here I am getting close to 70 years old, and I'm just as healthy as I was when I was 25, so why not live that way? It's worth it. You can see all of Dr. Day's incredible story and materials on healing by going to her website. I hope this has given anyone watching this program who has an illness in their life some inspiration to take your healing into your own hands in partnership with whichever beliefs work best for you. Until next time, thanks for watching.